question. I, I want to then uh, briefly discuss what is necessary if you actually want to contribute modules um, to Jetscape. Okay, so I, I said earlier, and we always try to make a big point in Jetscape, that it's, Jetscape is really designed for users to contribute new physics modules. Yeah, it's really our hope um, with the framework. So the framework connects those modules together. And so if you want to contribute modules, you just need to interface um, the, that specific module to Jetscape. Um, and I, I kind of hinted at this already, but the steps that you need to do um, are relatively simple. You just need to implement some, the appropriate standard functions. So in, in many cases, this is, um, this is exactly these functions listed here, init, exec, uh, and those are kind of the main ones. Um, for some other more derived modules, which we'll see later, there are um, some slightly different functions. Um, and then you need to use the appropriate signal slot information to interact with other modules. So you have to basically respect the, the interface that's defined by Jetscape of how two different types of physics modules are connected together. Um, and for this, uh, of course, uh, uh, a good way to, to do this is to take a look at existing modules um, uh, to, to see exactly what is necessary to implement your own. So as one example of this, um, one might want to implement your own uh, jet energy loss module. And so to do this, um, what you need to do is you, you write a module which inherits from this Jetscape module base class. And then you need to implement in your module a function called init. And here you can, you can read in, for example, some parameters from uh, the uh, XML file. Um, and then you need to implement a function called do energy loss. So this is a case where um, you don't implement the function exec directly, but this one called do energy loss. Um, and this, uh, what this does is it will basically take in a list of input partons and you will do whatever you want to do in your energy loss code and spit out a list of output partons. And that's really all that you have to do. So it's, it's kind of, um, the idea is to make it as simple as possible and to make you not have to care uh, about what's going on outside of your module as much as possible. Um, this, so th this is a common example, I think, that, that there are a lot of people interested in jets. So um, this is a useful one to highlight. But I, I do want to point out also that the jet energy loss modules are actually slightly different. They're a bit special um, in that they, they call this function do energy loss, um, which is actually executed by the framework per parton. Whereas it, for most modules, um, the, the function exec or some other specific function um, is called per event. So th there are some specifics here, depending on which type of module you want to implement. Um, if you have any confusion about this point as you dive into it, also please um, don't hesitate to uh, discuss with us. And finally, um, just a useful thing to be aware of if you're implementing your own module is that there is uh, an XML reader. So this is a class which basically allows you to, to call some simple functions to initialize um, parameters from the XML file. Okay, and this kind of takes care takes care for you of this machinery to um, to use either the default parameter in the, the so-called master XML file or to use the user defined parameter that overrides that uh, in your user XML file. So all of those mechanics will be taken care of automatically for you, um, and you can call just some simple functions, um, kind of giving the the path in this in the location in the XML file. Um, and so th this is just a, a useful thing to know if you're implementing and want to initialize your own um, parameters in Jetscape. Okay, so that, um, that kind of brings me then to 